And now we come to Kepler. Kepler first tried to match Tycho's observations with circular orbits, as all astronomers had done before him. But an eight minute, just one quarter of the moon's apparent size on the sky discrepancy forced him into ellipses. So we're cutting to the chase of his innovation, because this is the point where Kepler had to prove himself a great scientist. Remember, he had 2,000 years of history and tradition from the Pythagoreans through Aristotle and the great minds of Greek philosophy saying that in the heavens circles reigned, spheres reigned, they were the most perfect objects and all orbits should follow them. But we read his quote, if I had believed that we could have ignored these eight minutes of arc, I would have patched up my hypothesis accordingly. But since it was not permissible to ignore, those mere eight minutes pointed the road to a complete reformation in astronomy. We see here in this moment of perfect intellectual honesty that Kepler is driven by the data and 2,000 years of tradition be damned. He recognized that the orbits were not circular and as a mathematician he knew that they were well fitted by ellipses. So let's look at Kepler and his life. He was born into a Lutheran middle class family in Germany. His father was a mercenary who put down a Lutheran uprising in the Low Countries. He was a brilliant student right from the beginning. He won a scholarship to the University of Tübingen and went in to study theology. But like many of the people we've been talking about, he didn't stick to his first path and he ended up as an astronomer. He was also a brilliant mathematician right from the start. He studied with Mestlin, who taught both Copernicus and Ptolemy. Mestlin scolded Kepler for bringing physics into astronomy. Although he was a Lutheran, Kepler refused to adhere to the Augsburg Confession and thus managed to annoy both Protestants and Catholics. This continued to struggle through the life with the church on this. These are esoteric disputes. He was a Lutheran who believed that the wine is Christ, as opposed to a Calvinist view where the wine merely symbolizes Christ. These schisms in the religion of the time were deeply rooted and, in fact, could often be fatal. Kepler combined deeply held religious beliefs with Neoplatonist ideas. He was motivated to understand the reasons God made the world the way it was. He also was a practicing astrologer, and he tried to find the mechanism through which it might work. Kepler describes an epiphany while teaching about the locations of the conjunctions between Jupiter and Saturn. He realized that you could insert what are called the five platonic solids. These are the five perfect shapes based on fixed numbers of sides, and they would perfectly fit in the distances of the planets of the Copernican system. These are the cube, the tetrahedron, the dodecahedron, the isecahedron, and the octahedron. Amazingly, embedding these solids, as in the diagram to the lower right, gave relative distances accurate to 5%, except for Jupiter. This extraordinary coincidence he saw as profound. He saw that it meant something deeply mathematical about the universe and the way that it was arranged. He published his book Mysterium Cosmographicum, in 1596 was the first published defense of the Copernican system. He tried to reconcile biblical evidence for geocentrism with the sun's position. He said the sun was larger than the planets and naturally must be at the center, and the sun must have a dynamical or mechanical influence on the planets. He didn't know the concept of gravity. He still, however, used the Ptolemaic apparatus to describe the planet's motions. Kepler was the imperial mathematician to King Rudolf II and was widely celebrated as one of the best minds in Europe. In 1609 he published his reference to the 10-year battle with Mars and its orbit which stretched to more than 650 pages. The quote from it saying, If thou art bored with this wearisome method of calculation, take pity on me who had to go through with at least 70 repetitions of it at a very great loss of time. In this way, by forcing himself to explain Mars the way it really is, rather than the way people thought it might be or should be, he gives up geocentrism, he gives up circular motion, he gives up uniform speeds. What he gains is agreement with Tycho's observational data and a physical description of planetary motion for the first time. 
Here's Kepler's first law. Planets travel in ellipses with the Sun at one focus and nothing at the other. Perihelion is the distance when an object is closest to the central object, the Sun, and aphelion when it's furthest away. This diagram is, of course, exaggerated. In a second law, called the Equal Area Law, if you trace the area swept out by an object, any planet, in orbit of the Sun, it traces an equal area in a unit time, such as 30 days. We can see the examples here. In these view, a comet is an extreme version of this ellipse, where it spends most of its time far from the Sun, traveling very slowly, and whizzes through the inner solar system, traveling close to the Sun and very fast. Here we see these two laws animated. In his next book, Harmonisi Mundi, in 1619, in the first two of the five chapters, Kepler explores his wonderful discovery of the perfect solids, of how these polyhedra may fit together. This leads to his work in what is called the closest packing problem. He actually does a calculation of how you might fit objects like apples in a barrel, or grapes in a barrel, or a crate. And this leads him towards, but not quite to, the idea of the calculus. The next two chapters explore harmonic ratios in music and astrology. And in the final chapter, Kepler explores the harmony of the spheres, the motion of the planets turned directly into musical notes. This is an echo and an homage to Pythagoras' celestial harmony. And while doing this, he discovers his final law, that the period of a planet is proportional to the two-thirds power of the semi-major axis of its orbit. And we see that law here. This shows a relationship between the square of the period and the third of the semi-major axis. It does hold true. For simplicity, the graph only shows planets known in Kepler's time, but as we've discovered more planets since, it holds for them too. So with these three laws, Kepler had a perfect and predictable way of describing the motions of the planets, their positions at any time and date. Here's Kepler's third law with a worked out example for Jupiter. Kepler's later life was turbulent. His patron, Rudolf II, was deposed by his brother, Matthias, and Kepler had to leave his post in Prague. Three of his children die of smallpox. Galileo tries to get Kepler to take a post in Padua, but he cannot leave his home and his other children. His wife dies with smallpox, and there's a legal dispute over her estate. He has to defend his mother in witchcraft trials. His mother apparently was a practicing witch for many years and was always getting into trouble, and he had to use his full authority and reputation to avoid her from being executed. He remarries, he publishes his Harmony of the Spheres book, and he becomes an astrologer for Generalissimo Albrecht von Wallenstein, pretty much to pay the bills. Like Brahe, he did astrology just as a way to earn money. He traveled extensively and moved to Sagan and then Regensburg. In a little sad note, this is the time when Galileo has used the telescope to discover amazing things. He writes to Galileo and asks him for a copy of his telescope or a version of his telescope. And Galileo pretty much blows him off, which is a real shame because somewhat later, Kepler writes a letter to support Galileo in his troubles with the Inquisition. Kepler dies while traveling to collect debts, and his grave is not possible to visit. It was demolished soon after he died. And so we see the idea of a scientific revolution and how it plays out. It's not surprising that the evolution of Kepler's ideas became the prototype for Thomas Kuhn's notion of a scientific revolution in the 1950s and 60s. Kepler describes how laboriously he worked to try model after model make circular motion work, pushing a previous paradigm to its breaking point and past. He nearly abandoned the equal areas law as it could not be made to work with ovals, the other shape he tried. But he was enough of a mathematician to know of Apollonius's earlier work on conic section. 
So he even tried to save the ovals by using ellipses as approximations in order to calculate areas. Finally, and reluctantly, he realizes that the ellipse is the correct figure. But even then, he doesn't seem to be convinced. And really, the paradigm shift to a new way of thinking about the physics isn't really complete until Newton provides the convincing dynamics based on a new law of gravity that requires an ellipse. And so we see a history where now the Earth is removed from the center of the universe and everything goes round the sun. My movements are reactive, I'm spherical and lyrical The data is empirical, that finding you must have been a planetary miracle I've never seen a girl so fiery and gassy My light in the darkness dome, my girl a classy A lassie, a lady, she's got me feeling crazy I'm spinning while I'm grinning on my axis, feeling lazy The closer that I get to you, the faster that I start to move Newton's law's gonna make it true, my universe revolves around you my trajectory was circular One set point while my radius stayed fixed on her But that all changed with Kepler's big discovery He suggested I revolve with less consistency My path elliptical in shape Not like I wanna, but there's no way to escape Why an oval? You may be asking and it's right of you to question What I've told is true, the facts as I have tried to prove Albert Einstein gave the answer As to the path of the celestial dancer what do you say? He suggests it's the curvature of space-time And he's a pretty smart guy the faster that I get to you, the faster that I start to move. Kepler's law's gonna make it true. My universe revolves around you. A wolf was acting some come between other other satellites that you might be a seeing. I'm really hurt, girl. What have I been to you? I'm a solo system. There ain't room for two. That's it, baby. Now we're through. I hope you supernova and take me out till you be a black hole, honey. in your light. Girl, I knew you were true. The closer that I get to you, the faster that I start to move. Newton's law is gonna make it true. My universe revolves around you. The closer that I get to you, oh, the faster that I start to move. Kepler's law is gonna make it true. My universe revolves around you. And that's the end of this module.